So it's very nice to arrive here among all of you. And I'm sorry for what has happened before my coming here. But as I told you, that nature also can be awakened with the presence of a Divine Personality. And once it is awakened, it starts behaving in a manner as a realized soul would do. Like it gets angry with people who are not religious, people who don't want to know about God, people who are doing wrong things on life, people who are not normal people, in the sense they don't uh, want to be part and parcel of the whole, recluses, all sorts of people. And once it is brought to that level, then it starts working on its own. As you know that, according to Sahaja Yoga, all these elements have got a deity behind it. For example, Agni has got a deity called Agni Devta. In pure form, Agni Devta is the one which really purifies us. It purifies everything. It purifies, say, a gold. If you put gold in the fire, see, it doesn't burn. It comes out more brilliant, better. But if it is something that is not of such a value, it will burn out. So all inflammable things are mostly of a low-grade things which are to be burnt only. But amazingly, these lower things only, when they are enlightened, or you can say when you put some wood you take and you put fire to it. So when fire is added to that wood, the same fire which is coming actually the base is that, the wood itself, which is inflammable. And the flames that are coming out of that fire, once they are enlightened, they starts knowing what is truth, what is untruth, and reacting in such a manner as if they know what work has to be done. Now the difference between a Sahajogi and the fire which is so initiated is this, that it does not think about it. It just goes on completely finishing things which it has to do. And by a method of frequencies it knows where to go and which one to burn out. And that's how it goes on burning things which it has to burn. And <clears throat> some of the unfortunate things are that people feel that this fire has no compassion and that the fire must have some compassion also to spare some people. <laughs> but the trouble is, we must understand that we have so many things within us. We've got fire, we've got water, we've got Mother Earth, all elements are within us. But in the fire, it is only the fire element, nothing else. So it acts according to its own quality, that is fire. Now whatever is the quality of the fire, when enlightened, separates truth from untruth and starts behaving in that manner, but it remains fire. It cannot become compassion. But in a way, if you see, when you start choosing between the wrong type of a person and the right type of a person, if you see in a subtle way, it is compassion, because it is truth, and truth is love. So whatever it is doing is to manifest the love of God. And when it is manifesting the love of God, you should know that though it is fire, it gets the performance of a personality which is as if is a human being because it, it, it is discreet, it knows what to f burn and what not to burn. One day, I must tell you, we were uh, doing some sort of a cleaning of the doors with those lamps you get. And Linda one day, you see by mistake, brought that lamp very close to my body. And the lamp, uh, the flame was very strong, but it just went round me. And he didn't touch me. She was surprised. She said, Mother, you are burning. I said, Don't worry. It just went wrong and came out. So the fire doesn't burn a person who is pure. It doesn't burn. The example is 
Sita ji. Sita ji, when she was brought by Sri Rama from Ravana's place, see, everybody said that she has lived with a Rakshasa and she must be found out uh, whether she is guilty or not. So Rama, first of all, he said, all right, he put the fire. She herself said that you put a fire, a fire of fire, and she sat on that. And when the fire started burning, it could not burn her. She could not be burnt, see, and the whole fire subsided. So that time the Agni Devata knows what is right, what is wrong, who is holy, who is unholy. But human beings take a lot of time to recognize that and to understand, even in Sahaja Yoga, because the sensitivity has to be grown much more. Now why is it that anything that like water or Agni or any one of these elements becomes so sensitive that human beings are? How they just obediently do the thing, as if, as if they know the job and they are so quick at it, so efficient. The reason is they are completely under the control of the demon. They are under the control of the powers of God, absolutely, hundred percent. Whatever God wants, they do it, once they are enlightened. But human beings are still, you see, dwindling between his own human awareness and the divine awareness and the oneness with the God. So it is the sensitivity in a person grows very, very slowly, doesn't matter, makes no difference. And when it grows, it comes, you see, it moves sometimes two steps forward and five steps backward. Now, you see, again, like by the time it is about two years, you find the gentleman at the same spot where he started, <laughs> and you get quite upset how it has happened despite Sahaja Yoga. But this is the thing is that human beings can think and they can decide and they have ultimate freedom to give up this sensitivity at any time. So, you have to be under complete obedience of the Divine, which is one cannot understand sometimes the how to be like that, because we have not been brought up that way. We don't know how to do it. And it's very difficult. So many people say, Mother, it is very difficult to surrender. It's not that they don't want to surrender, but they say, think that we are still, you see, popping up somewhere. Mother says something, but we start questioning her. Mother says this, then we think that we should we can suggest to Mother this, another alternative and this and that. But there is no alternative, see, there is no alternative for a person who is a sensible person. If he knows that Divine is only thinking of your hita, of your well-being, and whatever it sees and does, you see, knows much more than you do, much, much more, and in so many dimensions that if somebody says so, that do like this, best is to do that. Sometimes it shocks people. People have ideas about sympathies, ideas about being, see, kind to others and to be compassionate to others. But what is a human compassion? It doesn't do anything, it just talks. Why? The God's compassion works. It works. It works on people. It doesn't talk that, oh, I am very compassionate, I am full of compassion, nothing. It just works, it manifests itself. So one should understand, to be a complete egoist personality, one should try to obey the Self within yourself. Now how do you obey yourself within yourself? It is through vibratory awareness. Try to obey through your vibratory awareness. Any question you want to ask, anything you want to do, you must obey it through your vibratory awareness. Now some people are not so sensitive, that's true. The reason why they are not sensitive is because they think about it. Now you think with your brain, all right? If your brain can be enlightened, then you will think as the Divine thinks and your sensitivity will improve, because sensitivity comes from the central nervous system. Now in the central nervous system, if there is any blockage, it is actually in the brain because all the centers are represented in the brain. So the best thing is to say that, Mother, come in my brain, please reside in my brain, please make 
your room in this brain. You be the controller of this brain. Let this brain be guided by your divine wisdom. And you don't think for yourself. And this word, I think, should be dropped completely from such a I think means goes on, I see, funny ways. It can be anything, you see. Like once we went out and we had one of my very stupid uh, relations staying with us, a girl. And uh, as I was going out, we had no service that day. So I, I was cooking, but that day when we were going out, so I told her, I was going in the morning, can you make a little bit of khichdi for us when we come back, we'll have that. That's the only cooking she did in her life, I mean, which she did not do also. So when we came back, uh, she told me that she had not cooked. So I said, why? Why didn't you cook? Because we were supposed to take our food here. She said, I, I thought that maybe you may not come, maybe you are not hungry, maybe you may not like to eat, maybe I may not do well. You see, so all these four alternatives not to do the cooking. But I said, why didn't you think that we may be hungry, <laughs> that we will eat? Why didn't you think this way? But I thought, you see, this is an explanation for uh, not having one in the brain, I should say, that there is no divine uh, guidance in the brain. Then the guidance comes from your ego or from your superego. We say, I, I thought that this might happen. But how, why, why did you think like I, Why not the other way now? Why did you think the other way now? But that is how it is. And when these things happen, we really are so much used to this kind of justification and alternatives to be offered that this becomes again the habit of the brain and the brain gets separated from the divine. So you tell your brain, oh, but why? Why did you think like that? Now will you stop thinking about these things and on these lines? Let us think of the positive thing. Now positive thinking is nothing but is a thinking as according to Sahaja Yoga, it's not aggressive thinking but it means that a thinking which helps to manifest the Divine, that is what is positive thinking. And the, and the, it's all right, it's all right. And, and the result of that is that your nerves start opening up and you start feeling <coughs> the, feeling the, manifestation of Divine power in your fingers, in your being. And this is the basic thing that doesn't happen in the West or in the Western culture, because we have a very big idea of always giving an explanation for anything. Now you can see that, supposing you go to a person who is possessed and you get possessed, then you give an explanation, you see, I went to that person thinking, I thought that I will cure that person. But the result is you are mad now. Instead of that person getting cured, you have <coughs> So what is the reason? The reason is you thought in a very negative way that I thought that this would <coughs> help me or I was helping that person. On the contrary, you got it. Now, the trouble did not think, no. it just entered into you without thinking. <laughs> it is there, it never thought whether I entered this person or not, it just came in, walked straight forward. While you were busy thinking, you see, it entered into your being <laughs> and settled down there. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like a thief walking into your house nicely, when you are busy, absent-mindedly doing something. See, it's exactly like you see the thief walking in, suddenly you find, oh, the thief is standing behind you. Now you said, I was thinking. You see. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly the same way it happens to us. And when we know, our mind knows that I can give an explanation about it, every time it is ready to give explanation, then uh, the mind, you see, is used to that kind of a phenomena that it will always give an excuse, always it will say something. So, 
it is never on the alert because you see even if the trouble walks into you you'll always say this is the explanation but explanation doesn't cure doesn't help you because by mental explanation <coughs> she's not well you see she give us some uh, soothing things some uh, soothing levels <coughs> okay with some soothing levels Yeah. All right. So, one should not be extremely uh, on the thought waves and on the depending on their thinking, because you see, thinking has an alternative. <coughs> thinking always has an alternative. You can say, "I was thinking this" or "I was thinking that." But whom are you blaming? It was you who were thinking, so you are responsible for. So, if you take the responsibility for your thing, then you may not do such a thing as to say that I thought if I had done this thing, it would happen. Because you are responsible for your thing. Supposing an engine driver decides that I thought I better go by the other route and has a big accident, people will ask you, "Why did you think like that? What was the thing that made you think like that?" But in every day-to-day -day life, I find human beings are always saying, "I think, I think, I think," all the time giving alternatives, and that's why they go up and down, up and down, up and down like that. But for fire, or for water, or for Mother Earth, there is no alternative. There is no alternative. If I just touch the Mother Earth and I say, "Suck in their problems, please," she sucks. If I tell the fire now, come now, you have been ignited. I don't even tell. I don't even tell. They immediately suffer. Their kundalini rises. You can see. You put a fire in front of my. It's fire. <coughs> you put a light. It's fire. It has no alternatives. It doesn't think. It has no alternatives. It's just enlightened. It has its own quality of enlightenment in the purest sense, because thinking makes it impure. Your enlightenment becomes impure by your thinking, by giving explanations, by giving all these nonsensical um, alternatives. In reality, whatever you are, you are the highest. You are the highest epitome of all the creation. <coughs> Even the thing that comes out of the mother earth cannot do the work that you can. Do. It cannot raise the kundalini. It cannot cure. Maybe little bit effects might, but it won't work out with that force, with that maneuvering. When you are like a very uh, advanced machinery, of course, very advanced, extremely uh, sharp and extremely effective. But the problem is this brain of yours. You see, when it comes in between, which is nothing compared to that big brain. You see, your brain is nothing but like a little mosquito. It comes up, you know, it comes here and there. Says, oh, oh, this, 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 and then the problem starts. But if you really start using his power within you, God has made you as the best instrument that you could think. Of. And as you start using your instrument with that wisdom. And surrender on humility. Gradually, it evolves more and more and more, and you start developing more sensitive sides, or we can say, evolving a new method in this, and getting a better and better understanding of the working of Sahaja. So, it is important that first of all, we must decide to stop the brain working too much. And say that, mother, you be in our way. Thank God, I am before you in course. It's not difficult. Just say that, mother, you have to be in our way. Now, this way is, as you know, is supported by the five elements. They all are in this way. <coughs> And if you can somehow or other bring me in that way, somehow or other, by telling your brain now not to disturb you anymore, you'll be amazed that immediately the whole. System will start working like a dynamo. It will be such a sensitive thing. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to think about it. You touch anything, it becomes gold. Sort of thing. You see, become my dust touch. It becomes such a great thing. 
but that is to achieve is difficult for them. They find it difficult to achieve that kind of a perfection where you lose completely your ego and you become egoless, like the fire, the mother earth, like all other animals. They have no ego. It's only human beings who have built the ego. And the ego is such a big myth. Of course, when you don't do anything, why should you think you are doing something? And why should you be responsible for doing anything? But the thing is, we, we think that, no, it's not God, we have to do this thing and I have to decide. You see, it's just we play tricks with ourselves. Morning till evening, spoiling our brain, absolutely becoming mad. Best thing is to surrender and see that things will come before you. You will be amazed for how it has happened, how it has worked out. The other day I told just Kerry, you better go and register this. She said, Mother, uh, the the university has closed down its rates. I can't do it. It's very difficult. I said, all right, I have said it to go. Then she telephoned, they said, no, it's impossible, you just can't do it, but if you want, you can come and see. And as she walked into the university, in the office, they said, all right, come on, we are registered. It is. So many times it will happen to you people. But it took about ten minutes for me to convince her that you just try it. But I must say, still, she was not so adamant. She was thinking, if Mother is saying, I will get it. Mother is saying, it will work. But if you suppose it's all right, Mother, you are saying, I'm just going to register. Finish. Then what happens? Even if you do not get registered, doesn't matter. That's not important. Your brain improves. That's important. That your brain improves. It becomes more sensitive. It's not important that the work should be done, that's not important. What is important that in your brain you must get this idea that let me be enlightened, food. all right? This is what one has to understand in a very subtle way, that we all are very sensitive instruments made by God and all our energies are not at work. So we have to supply energy to all our nerves and that's only possible if we remove our blockages created by our ego and our condition. If you can remove the blockages, all our knowledge will become very sensitive. And that's why tell your mind that now any further you better put mother down.